Hey guys, how you doing? Dervy here. So this video is going to be part two of my weekly developer post video. Um, so in case you don't know already, every week I'm going to be doing a rather large roundup of all the developers posts that are, have been in the week, including some Japanese posts that have not yet been translated. So the first one that I'm going to be talking about is CM AFKs or AFKs in any duty fund dungeon in general. Now this is rather annoying, um, it is annoying when someone randomly decides to go AFK during the middle of an AK run, you can't really do anything about it, you have to wait for them to come back, or you have to progress through the dungeon without them. So we have this post that says, Greetings, the development team is aware of the issue where players go AFK during the dungeons without participating at all, and they will be making it so if a character does not move for a certain period of time, they will be automatically kicked from the instance. This will be implemented along with the MVP voting system in patch 2.1. Which is very good. So now if a dickhead decides to go AFK during the middle of my CM or AK run, they're now automatically going to get kicked. Now there was also um, a feature that I missed out in last week's video and I'm going to include it right now which is in fact a vote kick feature. Now this is a JP Dev post, um, so thank you to Reinhardt for your uh, translation for this. And it goes as follows. To have a vote kick feature while using the duty finder is not hard to do technically, and we are planning to release. However, there is a possibility of this feature being used wrongfully. Therefore, we are focusing to make sure these types of problems don't occur as much as possible. For that reason, the release timing is not yet confirmed. We are looking into this if we are going to implement this in patch 2.1. The next part is about Bane, especially for you Arcanists. And it says as follows, Greetings. I just wanted to let you know a bit about Bane and that we are planning to make adjustments to the action help text. Bane can spend up to 3 enemies. We balance it in this way due to the fact that the action from the Garuda Egg extends the duration to the point where you can maintain a close to 30 second dot, Arcanists can utilise their magic and pet deal their own damage. Compared to the Black Mage's Fire 2, it is somewhat inferior as burst damage, but depending on the situation, Bane can deal more damage. So consider the fact that different situations lend themselves to different jobs. We apologise for the number of enemies Bane spreads to is not written clearly and we will be adjusting this in patch 2.1. Now this is a little uh, tooltip patch that they're going to be doing because currently Bane on the tooltip does not say how many enemies that it will spread to. Now this one is a very interesting post. Um, this one is mainly about uh, people like myself who tend to use the legacy camera control settings. It goes as follows, we have finished implementing the feature where the camera will automatically return to a fixed distance point for the legacy control setting on the development version of the game. Currently, the Q18 has started the debugging process and though I am sure that I will get some flack for releasing this too late, it will be in patch 2.1. But sometimes when you're running around, your camera just goes all haywire in legacy camera settings. And um, maybe it's because I'm bad at using it? I don't know. But it does seem a bit clunky to me, and I am glad that they will be fixing this issue. Now, this is another issue as well with this game, especially with free companies. Um, if your free company leader has just left randomly without any message, and hasn't promoted someone else, and they have been AFK for at least you know 10 days, 12 days, uh, 15 days, even a month nearly, um, there's nothing you can really do about the FC, um, unless of course you all decide to leave and someone else remakes the FC, which is a lot of hassle. So um, we have this developer post which goes as follows, greetings, as there is currently no way to transfer the permissions of the free company leader to other members in the event that they leave the game or don't log in for a long time, we are working to make it possible to receive these permissions via some method. For example, if the leader has not logged in for a very long period of time, it will automatically be passed to another officer by specific rules. We will be implementing this system after patch 2.1. So in other words, um, if an FC leader hasn't been logged on for a rather long time, if a certain criteria has met, 
um, the game will automatically give FC leadership permissions to another official. Now, I think this feature is very good, especially for these, you know, rather social FCs that don't really have any strict leadership or um, strict website formats or anything like that. I think this feature will be very good for those types of communities. Next up, um, this is a feature that I have honestly been waiting for a very long period of time. Um, in case you don't know already or you haven't seen it for whatever reason, you'll always have hordes and hordes of people uh, spamming and shout oh we're advertising for this FC, oh we're advertising for that FC and um, personally I'm guilty for that as well because I do it quite often with my own FC um, however we have this post that says hey we are planning to add an in-game search feature for free company member recruitment for example you'll be able to browse from the following grand company affiliation free company rank comments, probationary features. Besides the above in-game feature, we are planning for other community focused efforts on the forum to help promote free company recruitment. Look forward to this in the future. Now I do think there should be an in-game method to actually easily recruit people or if someone's looking for a free company there should be like a special board where someone can go and say hey I'm looking for this type of free company and people can go through this list or free company leaders can go through this list and you know pin pick who they want and who they don't want. But another feature that I really think they really should do is upgrade the lodestone. You know, make it so a free company leader can tag their FC to specific tags or to specific graphics. So semi hardcore, end game raiding, hardcore, social, casual, uh, PvP orientated, um, RP griefing even who knows but it would be really nice if there was a feature on low state where someone can tag their FC and someone like myself can click on a certain tab uh, click on a certain tag look for the world that they're in and then browse all the FC's that meet, uh, that meet a certain criteria I believe that would make FC recruitment so much more easier but yeah at least they're taking a step forward to make recruitment a much easier process than it currently is because sometimes you could be spamming more donor for days and not have a single person reply back to you. Next up, um, there is some complaints from uh, more casual players for some reason, um, complaining about um, the mythology tone cap, and they're saying that it should be per job. And um, I don't understand why it should be per job. I mean, if you're gonna make it per job, you might as make you might as well just make it so everybody receives free mythology. You know. Um, a mythology tone cap is there to make sure that people don't abuse a certain system. There has to be a sort of progression, you know. It's fair enough having a game where you can play every single class. There is a saying that the jack of all trades is the master of none. And it does kind of make sense, you know. You, if you can go about and uh, max out every single class, every single job, and then be able to gear yourself up in the best gears possible, there's going to be no discrepancy. You know, you're never going to be known as, oh, Dervy the Dragoon, or Ranger X Legolas XX the Ranger, you know, you, there's going to be no identity, so there has to be a sort of identity at endgame, especially if you want to build a really big community, that's how I feel. Now, this post is about um, Files of Fantasia, and in case you don't know already, Files of Fantasia, you get one of these files um, when you subscribe and they allow you to change your looks and your race. Now, currently you can only get one Fantasia in the game or two if you were a legacy player. However, I'm glad that they're adding this feature in the game and they have said, as mentioned in this thread, the team is still discussing the details around this, but in the future, we will definitely want to offer more vials of Fantasia as well as something that allows players to change their name. Now, I have a feeling that they're gonna allow this feature or they're gonna make us purchase these are vials along with the name changing feature with Krista and in case you don't know what Krista is Krista is like um, a second currency I guess it's like a middle currency where you can uh, exchange real money for this separate online currency and with this currency known as Krista you can go and uh, buy yourself online game time like I have so I have a feeling they're eventually going to add really, you know, gimmicky microtransactions in this game via Krista. I don't think they're going to be adding much vanity items, but I think they're going to be adding, you know, um, like world transfer services, um, name changing, uh, vials of Fantasia, all these kinds of stuff. I think, you know, really gimmicky things. Maybe more um, inventory tabs or 
uh, retainer tab slots I think that would be really cool there are certain games that do um, have this feature where you can buy extra tabs um, but currently I'm kind of happy with the current retainer cap now this thread is about the uh, dark devices um, fate but basically you can stand on top of one of the pillars and start shooting down and killing enemies from afar and they have said while standing in this position and battling against the enemy isn't against the rules per se and we don't plan on taking any action against those who do this being able to play this way is not in line with the spirit of battle we would like to ask that you please submit this as a bug report and let the team know if you find any more places like this so it can be adjusted so in other words people really shouldn't be using terrain exploits you won't get banned for using a terrain exploit per se um, however the developers don't like it and they suggest that you do report bugs like this and so they can get it fixed so I presume in patch 2.1 they're gonna go and ninja fix this so you can't jump on top of one of these pillars um, there are a few other trees as well in Mordona that you can jump on top of and uh, I've jumped on top of a lot of trees in Mordona and I find it kind of funny because um, you're dancing in midair without anything holding you down but hey I'm glad that they're taking some action against these terrain exploits now this is a really really long post, um, I'm not going to go over it really, um, I'm just going to say a few things that um, basically this thread was a barbershop wishlist and people started posting what they want and what they don't want in the barbershop and um, one of the developers actually came on here through one of the community reps and started going through all the features that will actually be in patch 2.1 and there's a lot of features with the barbershop that's going to be here so I suggest that you all go and uh, take a look at this post because there's quite a few uh, really cool things such as uh, punk style haircuts and stuff like that you know they said we're planning to gradually add more hairstyles and interesting looks which I think is really really cool um, because I really want to make my character look really you know gothic and punky you know really alternative style you know I'm kind of into that kind of stuff anyway why did I even tell you guys that? <laughs> but anyways, um, now just as I was about to actually uh, finish this video and start rendering, um, the developers decided to come on the forums and make two posts. Now this post is going to be about some UI adjustments and additions that they are going to be adding for patch 2.1 and after patch 2.1. So most probably, you know, maybe a patch 2.15 you know something along those lines so the first thing they're going to add is focus targeting now focus targeting is already implemented in the game however they have said we will be changing the focus target feature so that its display is set at the highest priority and also improving the visibility of the casting bar at the same time we will be also expanding the areas you can click now this is a very um, good update um, in case you don't know you can click on the target and press shift and f and you can focus target and uh, what this does is brings up a little target bar of someone else um, this is very helpful in places like ads turn 2 where you can focus target one of your healers and see when their elegant rot is about to run out and then run towards them now focus targeting is a very very good trick it's a very very neat feature however there are quite a few problems with it um, like I said in this post, uh, you can't see the target bar correctly, you know, the target bar is really, really small, um, it's really hard to notice, um, it's not good, you know, it needs to be worked on. The next part is the teleport window, we will be making adjustments to the teleport window so that it does not go off the screen, mainly PS3 version, moving forward we will continue to improve the teleport UI to make it easier to see. Now I think the teleport UI currently is absolutely awful, it's the most dreadful UI in this entire game. Why are they going to have every single teleport option in one gigantic list? Why don't they make a small box window divided up into three sections? So we have the Gadania, the Black Shroud, the Fanonlan and Lakoskia. Each uh, section will then have all of the uh, teleports listed underneath them. It will make it so much more neater and so much easier to find where you want to teleport rather than having it in one gigantic list. And it is annoying as well because there are times where I do like to play on a smaller resolution like for example when I'm gathering because I like to watch movies at the same time and um, when I click the teleport function you know sometimes the teleport 
but teleport screen is off my bloody screen, you know, I have to move it about and all these other things, it's really really annoying and um, I'm glad that they're addressing this issue. Post 2.1, meaning uh, these are going to be updates that are going to be coming out after patch 2.1. Mog letters, we will be adding a history searching for sent letters in the mug letter window um, this is a no-brainer you know if you send a letter to someone you can't see what your sent letter is you know you can't check your history of your sent letters it's a really stupid thing um, I'm glad they're finally adding this gear sets we will be adding an icon to equipment that is included in the gear set to make it easier to distinguish um, again this is a needed update um, I think I covered something like this before in my previous videos, I can't remember. Anyhow, this is an update that was definitely needed. And the chat window. We will be making it so you can change the name of your chat log tab without having to delete it. Thank god. This is another really stupid update that I really should have had at launch. You know, it's taken them too long to implement these features, you know. And the fact that we're not even get them until after patch 2.1, uh, you know. It's not looking good, but I'm glad that they're still moving in the right direction. Now, this is for uh, free company chests and um, about their settings and stuff. I don't really know about this because I'm not really a guild leader, um, so I don't really have any access to the guild chest. However, um, a community rep has said hello. As a follow up to my previous post, I just wanted to share a couple more details about what is planned for company chests. We will be displaying the below when items are placed or removed in company chest in a log that will be displayed. And then we have the list which is Name of the player who stored or removed an item slash chick girl Name of the player who stored or removed an item slash girl Time in which the action was performed The item or girl Number of items or girl The action performed So anyway guys, um, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video um, In the description box there will be a link to every single one of these uh, developer posts So you can go and give them another read when you're bored Or if you just fancy this reading them because you can't see them on the screen um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys later.